I um, started teaching this lesson last week and did not get as far as I desired or thought I would get. And so the Lord reminded me that Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> and uh, he told me that since uh, you'll be here for a while, Just put a pin in it, a comma, and uh, come on back to it. So the title of this lesson, to be continued, is Disciplined for Destiny. Everybody shout, Disciplined for Destiny. I'm not going to recap the whole message, but let me, let me jump in and say, before we shout over this being the year 5780, the year of pay, the year of the open mouth, and before you start blabbing and grabbing, naming and claiming, before you start doing all of that, God wants to put perspective to the season that we are currently in. And I know some of you are celebrating, thank you, Lord, last day, last day of the fast. But the spirit of consecration shall and must continue. Come on. The spirit of consecration shall and must continue in this house. This is not what you do in January and as soon as it's over, you forget it. God has been meeting us in prayer on Thursday nights like we have never seen in the history of this church. Y'all are quiet. Every Thursday night since God implemented this corporate, we have never seen and felt the power of God in unity. So it's not something, it's not an event. I've been here 17 years. And what I sense on this place now, I have not sensed. As a matter of fact, the last time I sensed it was probably Cook Road. So what God spoke to me and says, I am creating a new hunger. Not enough of y'all. I want to restore, and I heard Pastor, uh, Elder Stokes and I were talking yesterday, and he said while he was in this quiet time, he began to ask the Lord, Lord, take me back. When I first received you, take me back to that place where my passion was heightened. You know what, us, uh, what we need as an individual is passion for God again. See, church gets in the way of your passion for God. And then you blame church and church people for why you are lukewarm. But can nobody keep your fire burning? Y'all ain't going to like what I got to say today. If you don't fan the flames, if you don't feed the fire, you don't have the right to sit in church and make the pastor or anybody else responsible for where you are spiritually. The old folk used to sing a song like this. If I die and my soul be lost, it's nobody. And let me tell you this, the only way for this to continue is that we must walk in discipline. Everybody shout discipline. Oh, y'all should have shouted when you had a chance. Everybody shout discipline. It's going to take discipline to develop your skill is going to take discipline to get anything done. It is discipline that is required. Mm. Everybody shout discipline. Ah, why is that important? Because discipline is painful. John Maxwell, I think it was, who said that we don't like discipline because usually discipline comes with pain. No pain. You can't be in the gym hanging out 
thinking you're going to walk out with muscles. Y'all have to be Popeye fans to even know what I just said. If you are going to be in a gym with a desired goal to get sculptured and shed pounds and, you know, get ripped and all that other stuff that they want chiseled, you can't be in there sitting on the bench and think just because you're sitting around people who with lifting weights is going to happen. You can't get power with God if you're just going to sit up in church. Yo, boy. This requires a discipline. If the only time you hear the word or read the word is when I ask you to turn in your Bibles on Sunday. You know, when I was in grade school, that's when you're old, you start saying things like grade school. <laughs> High school, middle school, we say stuff like, you know, that teacher gave me a fail, a, a, a F. That teacher gave me a 70. Some of y'all in college still saying stuff like that. You know that professor. <laughs> Richard said, and they do. No, 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 no. They gave you. The only one that, only one that doesn't give you what you deserve is God. Aren't you glad God never gave you but the professor gives you what you give them you cannot expect out of life what you don't put into life you sitting around here jumping and shouting over I'm a millionaire and I'll never be broke a day in my life but you lazy. I have a prophetic word that I need to release. Let me squint my eyes and look deep and spooky because God just dropped a prophetic word on me, Henrietta. And I need everyone to embrace this word. Matter of fact, lift your hands and embrace this word. You will, thou saith the Lord, thou shalt be broke. If you do not work, <laughs> yea, I say unto thee, and I don't care the amount of hands laid on you, I don't care who calls you out, calls your name, gives you a social security number, none of that matters beyond your discipline. I wish I could talk to the right people. The reason why the devil fights us in this area because he knows that there is potential reward. He knows that if you ever buckle down and get focused, if he, know, he knows if you get the foolishness out of your life, y'all ain't gonna like what I gotta say. He knows if you ever get focused on your goal, if you ever get focused on anything, the devil fears a focused person. Because people who are focused get it done. I didn't say people who were gifted. I didn't say people who were smart. I didn't say people who were cute. I didn't say people who were charismatic. He knows that there is something about a disciplined individual. That causes God to respond. Delayed gratification is a result of discipline. And our problem is, and I think I said this last week, and if, if, if so, it's just a good review, but I want to I I just exhaust this for a moment. Our problem with delayed gratification is we live in an age of advanced technology. So everything has been accelerated. Everything is at the snap of a finger. 
you used to, you and I used to eat leftovers, Michelle. We used to you eat leftovers and have to put them back in the oven, back in the pot. But now, and they're making things in such a way until they're all microwavable. You can sit there right now in church and go to another service with me preaching. Shame on you, but I'm just saying. But think about this. On your phone right now, you can talk to anybody anywhere in the world. You can see anything anywhere in the world in a matter of seconds. The problem is, now imagine, uh, uh, just think for me how, how lazy we become. Most of us don't know phone numbers anymore. Just keep looking straight. If something happened to your call, call log, it's a wrap. Some of you couldn't call your mama. Just keep looking straight. You couldn't even call your loved ones if that name didn't appear. Because we live in this J.G. Wentworth culture. I want my money. I thought y'all would know it. So as a result, everything we approach in life is from this mentality. And it's antithetical to your spiritual development. Watch this. Instant gratification advancement of technology works against you spiritually. People are attracted to the fast. I'm not going to bother and beat up on the millennials. Not. But I'm going to say this. One of the things that I want to apologize for to millennials. See, y'all thought y'all y'all was ready to roll your eyes. <laughs> Look, y'all was y'all was ready. Look at you. Oh, here you go again. Relax. I'm going to apologize to you. And what I want to apologize for is my generation. What we did not show you always is process. And we were so busy trying to make sure we weren't like our parents till we gave you things so quickly until you thought that was how life was and then you grew up without a work ethic. And if it don't come, let me tell you something. When I was coming along, we were scared to have a whole bunch of holes on our job resume. We, don't want to, we didn't want to sit, um, when I say holes, I'm talking about windows of time where you could not be accounted for. I'm talking about you didn't want 10 jobs, I'm talking about you were there three months. Which means you made it 90 days and said, I don't want this no more, I'm out. Because you knew that the sweat was going to pop on your neck when the interviewer asked you, so now where, what were you doing? It's ringing. What were you doing? What were you doing between now and then? Like, Okay, so you left this in September, but um, you, didn't, you didn't do anything the next April. What were you doing? We didn't want to have that conversation. Now, child, please. I ain't got to take that. I'm out. I got a witness in the corner. <laughs> but that's wrong because, hear this. It doesn't give you the level of discipline and strength and fortitude that it takes to live life for real. Because everything ain't coming overnight. Sometimes, I know he's an on-time God, but sometimes you got to put some time on it. 
Because it builds in you something. It builds character. It teaches you how to wait. Come on, talk to me. It teaches you sometimes, you know what? I thank God for delayed gratification because sometimes um, in when you're waiting on something, you learn how to figure it out. I have learned, I have learned, God knows, and I thank you for this lesson, Jesus. But I have learned to stop responding every time somebody holler. I'm going to tell you why. Because I discovered that sometimes when you delay and don't respond, they figure it out. And by the time you come around and say, oh, no, no, I got it. I took care of it. But you want to make me stop my whole life for something you wouldn't even think about. You want me to pray for you and you ain't even ask God nothing. I'm supposed to rearrange my whole schedule. Because we are not good with delayed gratification. But I'm going to tell you something. Intergenerationally, every generation, every dreamer, every builder, every shaper, you can't harry God. Old folks used to say, no, you just got to wait. You got to trust him. I know y'all don't like the old stuff, but let me just tell you this. And give him time. No matter how long it takes. Because he's a God that will not be hurried. He'll be there. Don't you worry. This is the part you ought to shout on. He may not come when, because you ain't got no discipline. But when he does come, because some things, watch this, are delayed because you're not developed. I don't have the right people. I ain't talking to the right people. Some things God don't give you because you ain't ready. Why would God give you a 5,000 square foot house and you can't manage a 500 square foot apartment? Stop praying. Y'all don't want to talk about it. You ain't even kept up what you have. And you want to make God responsible for opening the windows and pour you out a blessing. Well, sometimes I contain it. And it's going to be. And you can't handle little. If you be faithful over a. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I'll make you ruler. You won't keep the little car you got clean. You won't keep the all. Y'all ain't. You. You rigging stuff now. You're not responsible for what you have, but you pray and asking God to give you. Why would he give you more when you don't manage what you? On this consecration, I prayed a prayer that I thought was really crazy, but that's what happens when you get in the spirit because you know what the Bible says, and this is what really came to me. The Bible says, uh, Paul says in Romans, likewise also, we don't know how to pray for what as we are. But the spirit itself, you'll notice, make an intercession. Now, now, all my life, I thought it was God reads my mind and blah, 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 blah. You know, and I get in the spirit and he come out, shine, blah, 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 blah. And that's the spirit praying. But when you get, that's not totally what it means. It means that the spirit knows what you need to be asking him for. We don't know how to pray because we pray out of what we want. But the spirit knows what you need to be petitioning God for. I started praying one day at home during this consecration season, and I heard myself say something. I had to catch myself. I told the Lord, Lord, don't give me any more money. And the devil. No, no, wait, wait. I said to the Lord, I said, Father, in your name. Do not give me any more money. 
in this season, I'm not asking you for more money. I said, I said, you know what it is? is I need to eat. Because I am hallucinating. This, I am weak and it's affecting my thinking. I'm about to break this fast early. Because now my mind, I'm, I'm got mirages going on. I'm, you know, seeing things. Who was Tom Hanks talking to a coconut or something? What's that movie? Yeah, this, this is bad. But then when the, the Lord brought that scripture to me in that same moment, it made sense to me. Then I began to pray with, in the spirit, but then I began to pray with understanding. And Cassie, this is what the Lord brought me. You don't manage good what, I, what you have. Where's Elder Hunter? He's not here this morning. But, 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 but I need him to help me find my missing money. What I need to do is submit to a discipline to help me find money that I blow. Okay, y'all. Okay. Why should it? So the Holy Ghost knew for me to be asking God for more money would be praying amiss. Because I lack discipline. Because I'm, okay. I ain't telling y'all my business. It ain't none of your business. But, but I have to bring myself under subjection so that when I see something and know that I have the resources from it, but it does not fit overall in the grand scheme of what I'm trying to do with my life, I don't walk out the store with it just because. I ain't helping nobody but myself. Because now you got the merchandise, but you're mad because you ain't got no money. And God forbid an emergency come up. We have seen this. I have seen this all my life. And unfortunately, in the church world, the culture of church, is notorious for this. I have, I have uh, attended funerals of preachers. I have attended funerals of well-known musical artists, gospel artists, that they've had to take an offering up. And I'm not talking about some memorial fund, but they have taken an offering up to bury them. But you've got albums that have gone gold. You done sung all over the world, and we singing your songs, and you got royalty checks. But you ain't got no life insurance. Y'all don't want to talk about this, huh? You don't even got, and, and God help us, because February is coming, and, and that's our empowerment month, and we're going to be talking about some things that are going to help you. Don't be shouting around here, and, 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 and if you die, the church got to come up with all this money. Y'all don't, this ain't good preaching, I'm sorry. Not when you can get final, ex, final burial expense insurance, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Come on, talk to me. Do something else than just go to the mall all the time. Take $20 and put it in something that's going to help you. And now you a burden on your family. Y'all ain't, ain't got, like, your family fighting over a couple of dollars. You, how much can you contribute? I ain't got nothing. How much you can contribute? Now the family got the Hatfields and McCoys going on because you in your time of living, you didn't discipline. I don't hear nobody talking. We lack discipline. God help me. I'm going to make sure all y'all. Yes, Lord. So we can have a home going and not a burial. We can celebrate you going home instead of crying over you dead and now we got to pay. All right. Let's get to the text. Let's look at this. This text is, this text is interesting because this text shows us the prerequisites. This text focuses our attention upon four young men who, interesting enough, came to this position that we find ourselves in the text, they came to this position 
in a, in a unique way. Uh, Babylon had taken over Jerusalem, and now they are in captivity. And they are not just random four boys. These are top of the line. These are royalty. These are the pick of the litter because this is what the king said. He, 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 this is the decree that he made. He said, these are the prerequisites. For, I want y'all to find me. Find me some young men who are, watch this, physically fit, well-groomed, skillful in wisdom, knowledge, and insight, and can handle the room. I need, I need these fellas that are used to stuff. Because I'm getting ready to expose them to more stuff. But I want to know that they can handle the room. You're not ready for promotion until you can handle the room. Which means when God puts you in another room, it ain't, it ain't for you to go in there and start bragging about who you are. Some of us blow our opportunities of great doors because we talk too much. You learn when you get in a greater room to be quiet and learn the language of the room. So you have to listen to how people talk and interact in the room instead of bragging about Doc. Doc. Oh yeah, child. What's that, Gucci? Oh yeah, this is Louie. See, 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 when you know how to handle the room, you understand that that's ain't, that ain't the language in the room. Nobody talks about labels in the room. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Nobody talks about what school they've been to. Hear this. Nobody talks about who, where they live in the room. Because if you're in the room, there is an assumption that you belong in. I can't hear nobody talking to me. You don't have to talk about what you have when you get in the room. And, and you need to understand, and you need to understand, when God opens doors for you, if you're in the room, whether it's your first day or your 100th day, keep yourself. Behave yourself. Learn the language, the behavior, the culture, and speak when spoken to. Now, I need to say something about this pay before y'all get to shouting over open, open mouth. But the flip side of the coin of pay is this. It is not just the year of the open mouth. But it is the year that God will teach you how to speak up. But it is also the year where he will teach you how to shut up. Lord, yeah. Now shout about pay on that, on that side of the coin. Because you done had your mouth wide open about a house, a car, and all the business and all that. But the shout over this, Lord, teach me how to shut my mouth. Some things don't require a response. I have learned you don't answer every critic. Let them talk, let them feel, let them think. It don't matter, just stop talking. It takes more discipline to shut up than it does to post. You ain't got to answer everything you see on Facebook. You ain't got to do it. You don't have to do it. I don't care if it isn't in you. You know it's for you. You know it's directed in your, it's, it's in, it's in your direction. Keep scrolling. These men, these men, hear this. These men had the prerequisite were, so, so hear this. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, their Hebrew names, their names, these men fit the bill. Daniel, Betishazzar, Hananiah, we know him as Shadrach, Mishael, we know him as Meshach, Azariah, a bad Negro, I mean, a bad Negro. What is Nebuchadnezzar interested in? What is he interested in these guys? What, what is, what is about, attractive about these guys? Why does he want them? Does he want them because he's impressed with them? No. 
He knows that they are people of influence and are used to, and, are, and affluence. So they are used to things. And, and because they are used to things, he figures they would be attracted to live in the same kind of lifestyle even though they are in captivity. So get them, bring them, and watch what he tries to do. The first thing he does is he changes their identity. So he changes their name. Because the name denotes character. So he thought by changing their name, they would lose their identity. Second thing he does is he tries to change their appetite. Oh, boy. The third thing, I'll get back to the appetite in a moment, but the third thing he does is he seeks, seeks to change their education. These are already skilled, brilliant men, young men. Let's re-educate them, make them lose their identity and their connection to their culture so they'll be dependent upon only what we teach them. Sounds like the kings and the queens and the princes of Africa. Let's strip them of their land. Strip them of their identity. What is your name? Kunta. I'll beat you until your name is Toby. I'm going to ask you again. I'm going to beat you until you change your identity. Or you think I'm talking about TV. The enemy wants to steal who you are. By labeling you by what you've done. But I came to announce to somebody today. You may have done what they said you did. But you are not who they say you are. I don't have nobody to preach to. Let them call you whatever they want to call you. It is not what they call you. It's what you answer to. And your answer is based on what you know and think about yourself. I need you to look at your neighbor with an attitude and tell them, I know who I am. I know who I am. I don't need you to define me. At best, the only thing you can do is des describe me because you cannot define me. Stop letting people define you. They didn't main, name you. They didn't make you. They don't have the right to give you a definition. The best thing they can do is describe you by the behavior that you show them. Daniel decided, he resolved, the scripture says in verse 8, he, purp he purposed in his heart not to defile, not to pollute himself with the king's meat and the delicacies. <laughs> he decided, um, I don't need to identify, I don't need an appetite change. I don't need, I don't need for you to feed me, for me to feel like I'm important. I'll starve first before I let you manipulate me by what you feed me. Lord, I wish I had to talk to you. I will starve first before I depend on you and you make me beholding to you. Stop letting people control you by what they do for you. Or the threat of them not doing for you. You got everything within you to get the job done. Y'all, I'm preaching better than y'all helping me. I need some shouters in here. I need somebody on every road to open your mouth and say, I don't need you. I want you. I appreciate you. We are interdependent. But just in case you flip, just in case you fall out with me, just in case you withdraw from me, it's okay. God will send somebody. 
He'll close one door and open two more. For you that believe it, I need you to jump up and shout, I seen them do it. I seen them do it. Withhold your help. Withhold your support. God got somebody else. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. To God got somebody else. Daughters, don't you let no, no count Negro make you feel like you need them. You're telling your pastor said, you a benefit, not a necessity. And if you act like you don't want to be bothered, take care. To the left. No. That ain't in the scripture, Lord. I'm sorry. Let me get back. And men, don't you be a man with a woman or without one. Take care of your business without. Y'all ain't going to help me. Take care of your kids, even if the, the girl don't want you. Take care of your business. Handle your. This ain't, uh, uh. Be a man about yours. Kill the spirit in you. If they, then I will. Kill that. Thank you, Henrietta. My baby, my daughter's back. Thank you. I love it. Kill it. You need to kill it. No, here it is. I'm serious. Kill it in you. Because if not, you will have no discipline in no area of your life. You will always be tossed to and fro. You will be always vulnerable and susceptible to stuff. He says, I'm not going to defy. He purposed in his heart. I'm not eating the king's meat. I'm not eating. I'm not drinking his wine. I'll buy my own bottle before I drink his. Be why. Yo, I'll cook my own meal. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you've got to flex at the enemy and let him know, though he slay me. I don't have nobody to preach to. Every now and then you need to, need to tell the devil, the Lord gave. And the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every now and then you just need to tell your enemy, naked came I into this world. Naked, I'm going to return. No, 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 no. Every now and then, you just need to let the enemy know, I will survive. As a matter of fact, sometimes, listen to, hear me clearly, God withdraws some support so you can step up. I want to make this point, and I'll have but 10 more minutes. But... But I only need to make this point. The thing that struck my attention about this text, Ella Stokes, was Daniel respected who he was, whose he was. He respected it so much until he protected it. You have to learn how to protect what you want people to respect. You can go ahead and do that, but I can't. I ain't mad at you. That's how you want to live? Fine. I just can't do that. I can't roll with y'all. Y'all crazy. And, it's, and it works for y'all. Y'all can live that way and come to church and, and don't be affected. I can't. I, I need somebody to talk to here. Y'all can live like you don't have no God Monday through Saturday. But I got to bring myself in. I ain't judging you, but I can't be in the club Saturday night and on the choir stand Sunday morning. Loose me and let me go. I can't, y'all can do it. Bless you. 
I just can't. I can't preach, sing, play, drunk. I can't do that. Because I, I respect. I respect. So stop being mad when you don't respect. Respect God. Respect. Respect his purpose. I respect. I'm coming to. I can't, I can't roll with everybody. Because I respect. And and okay, let me get off there. Watch this. Sometimes we are so busy wanting to be liked and accepted, we will trade that over being respected. Some people, this is, this is where I am. This is where I am. This, this, this where, no, no, I ain't going to say me. This is where you, you got to find yourself at. You don't have to like me. But I'm going to live in such a way, and I'm going to handle you in such a way. You have to respect me. I discovered I don't have to like your opinion. I don't have to like your decision. But I have to respect it. When you learn, yes, Lord, I praise you for this. When you learn how to stay free enough to be respectful, you stop expecting any other, any other level of relationship. But when you have an insatiable need to be liked, which I don't have time to deal with this, but really speaks to something else that is deeper going on, when you have this insatiable desire to be validated by people and you will do anything and forfeit all your disciplines just because you want to be liked and be accepted, it's really not their problem, it's yours. There is something deeper going on on the inside of you because when you understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, validation should not come from the outside. It should always come from within. And I don't mean for you to be conceited, but when there is a void in your own existence, you look for Deacon Bruce to tell you that you're cute. You look for somebody, but you know, you know the reality is when you get comfortable with who you are and learn how to uh, appreciate the skin that you're in, you don't look for anybody else to tell you. Now watch this. They can't gas you up and they can't put you down. I wish y'all would holler long. But the enemy wants you to be saved and deal with and suffer from low self-esteem. But I came to bust that demon in the head. It is not self-esteem that you need. It is God perspective of who you are. Stop believing yourself about you. I told y'all before, I think I told you, I don't know if it was Tuesday night, I said that the biggest uh, section in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the um, bookstores are the self-help and self-anything is antithetical to the scriptures. You reading all these books about self this, 10 steps of this, and self-improvement, self all that kind of stuff, and your Bible teaches us against self-anything. But it is not in man to direct his own step. If I could help myself, I wouldn't need God. I can't hear nobody talk to me. The one person I am afraid of the most, I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of you. You can't do nothing to me that affects me that much. But what, who I am afraid of is myself. Because if I ever get unleashed on myself, Okay, y'all don't want to. I don't need no company to destroy myself. <laughs> Lord, I wish I had. I can have a the self-destructive party of one. So, somebody throw your hands up and say, Lord, leave, don't leave me to myself. Don't leave me to my own thoughts. Don't leave me to my own actions. Because I am dangerous so I need God to tell me remind me 
That's why I get, you got to stay in his word. I said, that's why you got to stay in his word. Because his word is a mirror. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, his word is a mirror. And the more you stay in his word, the more you realize who you are and who you are not. So, David protects what he wants to be respected. Daniel. And the Bible says, watch this, he gained favor with his place master. See, favor don't come, watch this, I know, I know y'all not going to agree, but favor don't come because people like you. Because people will like you and still talk about you. People will like what you do and still dog you. Uh -huh. But when they respect you, when people respect you, they'll do things for you that would not ordinarily be done and that you don't ask for. You know what favor is? Favor is blessings unasked for. Favor is what you don't ask for, but out of respect. You know when God gives you favor? When he respects you. I respect your discipline. I respect, okay, I'm going to give you some Bible because y'all sitting there like, what does that mean? Okay, Hezekiah said, let me tell my story. He said, uh, Isaiah came to me and said, set your house in order for tonight you're going to die. Right? He said, thanks, I, I got this. He said, I'll be back. Goes in the back, turns his face to the wall, and said, God, he didn't say, God, you know I'm cute, and God, you know people like me, and Lord, I'm gifted, I'm anointed. That ain't what he said. He said, Lord, you remember how I walked before you. When everybody else walked away from you, remember how I walked with you. And before Isaiah could get to the parking lot to put his key in the door, the Lord said to Isaiah, go back and tell him. I respect him. And because of my respect for him, I'm giving him 15. Y'all ain't gonna like what I got to say. You want the favor of God the rest of your life? Make God respect who you are. You want people to have, grant you favor? Be respectful. There's some things God got to do for me because he cannot deny my faithfulness. Before I met any of you, There's some, because yeah, sometimes people, Shannon, will make you feel bad for where you are because they don't know your story. But what you don't know is when I would ride the train and sometimes didn't have money and had to slide sideways through the turnstile. Y'all ain't got to go to church in the dead of winter and the gloves stopped working and the shoes stopped working or we had goulashes, y'all don't know nothing about them, with the big rep buckles. And we carried our shoes through the slush. And back then, we didn't have central air and heating in the church. I had to literally put my hands to play the organ. I had to put my hands on the radiator. And Mother Harris, yeah, Lord, I praise you. Uh, uh, and them would put towels on the radiator and say, Son, baby, stick your hand on here for a while so I could have mobility in my fingers by the time church started. Y'all can't relate. I was faithful when my lights got cut off. I was faithful to live in a place with no heat. And we just used five blankets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, y'all too cute. You're too modern. I get it. You, you don't have nothing. See, see so, so when you make God respect your faithfulness, when it comes time to bless you, Stop apologizing. Just look at him and tell him, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Oh, and I don't know who I'm preaching to when I say this, but God told me to tell about 17 of y'all, you got something coming.
and for your faithfulness. That ain't y'all don't know when to shout. But I need you to tell somebody it's your time. It's your time. It may not be your turn, but it's your time. God is about to late in the midnight hour. He's seen you crying when nobody saw you. He saw your hurt. He saw your suffering. He sees it. And you still came here and lifted him up. You still gave him praise. You still remained on your post. You still were faithful. And when nobody sees it, God is keeping score. This ain't for everybody. I can almost count for all the, uh, but for you that will embrace this. I need you to open up your mouth, your mouth and thank God and say, it's my time. It's my time. It's the season of, it's the year of pay. You're going to have what you say. Open your mouth and declare, it's my time. I don't care who's in line. It's my time. I don't care who's in front of you. I don't care who's behind you. I don't care how many folk got a number. God knows how to skip. Yes, Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And when you've been faithful, God will let you skip some steps. Y'all ain't going. <laughs> some people got to go through all the stages. But when you've been faithful, God will take you from the basement all the way to the top floor. Hallelujah. It ain't because, amen, you special. It's because you've been faithful and he respects you. When you gave to other people and you didn't have for yourself. When you covered people who exposed you. God is. When you could have blew somebody else's up life up. And they don't even know that you were their only ally. Some folk don't even know, they don't, they don't even know that you got a phone call regarding them. And you could have turned it on a dime. My God. Instead of it, you're covered. Yes, Lord. Instead of it, you said, you said give them a chance anyhow. I want to praise him. For conditioning me. I don't know who this is for, but God told me to tell you right now. He's, he conditioned you with all of that stuff. He made you so you could take it and you didn't even know you had to take it. Oh my God, I, I, I got to let y'all go. I promise you, I'd get out of here today. But he knows. He knows the, the personal sacrifices. He knows, Jarvis, he knows how many times you've been up and down that road and people mistreat you. He know when all they wanted was your talent to care less about you. You know, he knows when you did things in secret, Sister Jenkins, and it wasn't even a public thing. He knows, he, he knows when you're helpful. Yeah, I, I don't know who this is for, but he knows, he, he knows, he knows who you covered. And you had to stand there and watch them uncover you. Y'all don't want to talk about this. But God knows when you could have blew up. And, and, oh, the young people say, you could have blew up their spot. In retaliation, you could have blew up their spot. Could have blew up their marriage. And he knows what they said about you. And you knew that they said it. And you, he told you to hold your peace. He says, you, know, you were the one thing standing between them and the new job. And after all they did to you, you still gave them a thumbs up recommendation. God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. I need you to throw your arms around your neighbor and tell me he knows, he knows, he knows. He 
knows. You need to be encouraged. You need to be strengthened. He knows. He knows the sacrifices you've made for people. He knows how many bills you paid for folk in secret. And they act like you a dog. Treat you like a dog. Talk about you like a dog. They know how many times you cast a check for them. Knows them. No. Yeah. yeah. He knows how many times you sacrificed your body, was sick, and you came anyway. You served anyway. You went to work anyway. He knows. I don't know. Messiah. He knows. When you had to dry your eyes just before you got there. Because you didn't want nobody to know how painful it was. He knows. He knows how many times you've seen 6 o'clock in the morning. Because you couldn't sleep. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows the turmoil. He knows. And in spite of it all, you kept smiling. And you kept serving. And you kept loving. And you kept believing. He knows. Daniel said, let me get this out, y'all, because I'm done at this point. I'll tell you this. Daniel said to the place master, palace master, he said, tell you what you do. I don't want you to get in any trouble. Give us 10 days. 10 days. Prove us for 10 days. And if this ain't working, if it works, your job is spared. If it's not, we'll take the hit. Give us 10 days to prove our discipline will prove to be effective. So they ate vegetables and drank water. And this is the part to get happy. Verse 12 says, at the end of 10 days, they look better I almost feel like preaching. But at the end of 10 days, they look, the scripture said they look better. Watch this. And they were fatter. Now let me interpret that. They were not out of shape fat. But let me make this a little urban. They were PH. In other words, everything about them was better. And I came to announce to 2020 of you because of your discipline, God's about to make you better. Y'all don't know when to shout? So, I'll give you another reason to shout. Go to verse 18. Verse 18 says that when the testing was over, you think God is just taking you through some rigorous, non-essential challenge. But that's not what's going on. He's proving to you what he put in you from the beginning. Because the text says, when they are presented to Nebuchadnezzar, they answered every question. They were smarter, quicker, sharper, looked better than any of the magicians and the astrologers who had history in Babylon. You know when God's hand is on you, you could be the new kid on the block and God still promotes you. I don't know who this is for, but let me just go ahead and prophesy. Y'all ready for this prophecy? 
God is about to promote you over people who've been in place 20 years longer than you. Because of your discipline. Uh, y'all don't believe what I got to say. Not enough of y'all. Okay, y'all want to stay there. But God just told me to tell you, when they go to answering and interviewing you, you're going to answer clearer. Because one of the things that the fast did was, it gave them clarity. Some of y'all mad because you couldn't eat chitlins and, and hamburgers and steak. But let me tell you what the discipline does for you. It clears your mind. It gives you another perspective. It changes. Let me tell you what fasting and consecrating does. It changes how you see things. And you never know it while you're doing it. Lord, help me, Jesus. You never know what strength you're receiving while you're on it. But shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, you're about to see. I'm about to see the results of my discipline. Eyes have not seen. Ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man. The good Stand to your feet. I'm done. But this is the point of shout. Y'all get ready. Because we got to make some noise on this one. They answered Nebuchadnezzar. Watch this. And verse 18 says, at the end of it, they were ten times better. That was my shout. That was my dance. Because y'all missed it. Ten times. Better. So for all of you that will embrace this word and embrace discipline, their destiny was to stand before Nebuchadnezzar. Watch this. And not only, not only just be there, but their destiny was to be in a position where they could change the policies and the politics of Babylon. I need you to tell your neighbor, my discipline is about to pay off. I need you to encourage your neighbor and tell him your discipline your sacrifice is about to pay off and get this get this tell them get this now for all of you that are familiar with slot machines keep looking straight if you don't know what I'm talking about but there are some slot machines that give you two times Four times. But then the high end slot machines. I mean, the kind with the velvet ropes. There's a section in the casino, I just seen it on Travel Channel. where there's some velvet ropes. And you only go in, in that section, high roller. And the slots in there are different from the slots outside. So I'm told. But in the high roller section, they got a slot. And on the front of it, 10 times. And if you bet the max, if you hit 
betting the max on 10 times. Whatever you put in, 10 times. I need about 50 of y'all that got this word to tell your neighbor my discipline is making a difference and I'm about to be 10 times better this year than I ever been in my life. If you believe it, open up your mouth and praise him. Find 10 people and give them a high five and tell them 10 times. 10 times. 10 times. 10 times. 10 times. Now by the time you get to the 10th one, it ought to be a shout in here. There ought to be a praise in here. There ought to be a dance in here. I said 10 times better. Your life is about to get 10 times better. Your faith is about to get 10 times better. Your money is about to get 10 times better. Your relationships, 10 times better. Your anointing, kingdom life, your ministry is about to get, somebody shout 10 times better. with it but you need to open your mouth and come if you start confessing you will start possessing 10 times I said 10 times I said 10 times I said 10 times and this is the word of the Lord and this is the word of the Lord your hands up get those open hands up all ten fingers ten times ten times and they looked everything about them was ten times better but I don't want you to shout and miss the point it was a result of their discipline If you're honest with yourself and say, Lord, the truth of it is I got some areas in my life that I am undisciplined in. Get to this altar right now. I don't care who you are. You can be saved. It don't matter. Unsay, I want you to come to this altar because your coming which says I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I'm at this altar myself. My weight keeps fluctuating because I'm not disciplined. My health is not what it should be because I'm not disciplined. My attitude, my temper is not what it should be because I lack discipline. I'm asking God to calm any rage in me, any, any hurt. I'm, I need discipline. Not just my money, but inside of me. Lord, discipline me. Consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate me to do thy will. Consecrate me, Lord. Consecrate me, Lord. 
consecrate me to do thy will. Lift your hands. This is going to take really, this is you. This is not me laying my hands on you. You know the area in your life where you struggle with discipline the most. You know it. You know it. Me laying my hands on you is not going to give you the discipline. I can confirm and affirm, but the reality is I want you to go to God right now and say, God, this is an area for me. This is, this is a weak place for me. I'm not strong here. And it may be small. It may be small to someone else, but you know how big it is and how important it is to you. And I wouldn't let this small thing keep me from my destiny. The only thing standing between you and greatness may be this one thing. Could be, Lord, please, give me the discipline. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, open your own mouth. Come on, open your own mouth. Lord Jesus, here we are. We admit that we lack discipline in some things. Some areas of our life, we don't do all that we could do. Bottom line is, Lord, we're not as consistent as we should be. We're not going to relish on the past. We're not going to wallow in the past. We're going to forget those things which are behind us. But the fact that we're here today tells me we got a future. Because you could have cut me off when I defile myself with the king's meat. But because I'm still here, because we are still here, Lord, give us a new discipline. In the name of Jesus. I don't want my future to slip through my hands because I don't have strength enough to hold it. I want you in your own way to open your mouth right now. Come on, everybody at this altar. Come on, everybody in this vast auditorium. Come on, open your own mouth. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, another 30 seconds. Come on, reach out to God, come on. Is your arm on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart, heart does the spirit control. Oh, you can only be blessed. Have sweet peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. In this last act of discipline of worship, lift your voices to God. And decree and declare over my own life, your own life, I will be disciplined. I will be. I will seek help. I will seek a support. I will, I will seek wisdom. I will do what it, I will humble myself because my destiny is at stake. I got too much that I know you called me to. I got too much that I know you can do in my life. And I receive it now in Jesus' name. If you're here at this altar, you want to know Jesus in the part of